time to perfect, but I'll get it. It'll be done in the next day. All right, cool. Good morning, fellas. Bobby, nice to see you back, my friend. Yes, nice to be back. Feels Robert, good. Robert, Energized. Look at you. What's going on, Craig? Mike and all. Oh, look at Lurchy. Looking good. Bobby, you're looking refreshed. Big fish tank going. Uh, big time. I like that. Oh, that's not a fish tank. That's a TV. You that's liar. a TV. I said my thank you. It's like a fish tank. <laughs> Well, without it. the work and the cost, the fish don't die. It's called YouTube. Smart. Right? Oh, YouTube. Yep. All right, we'll get going in a minute or so here while we're getting more people logged in. Okay. So are we going to see everybody in a couple of weeks? Uh, I will be there. Bobby, you going to Dallas? Uh, I am not, unfortunately. I am not. I, I, I have, ta I have taken my place. I've taken my vacation quota until uh exp con in in october <laughs> there you go so yeah i'll be there in october as well not going to dallas though looks like it's you and me mitch party time <laughs> yep. you guys are both going to uh las vegas oh yeah i got i got everything yeah i know i, I, I'm booked. I just said uh, booked. I'm i don't in. I don't think I've not seen you at something I've gone to. You've been at every single thing I've gone to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's my only social life. <laughs> hey, Bobby, just remember, Mitch, we got to get a table together because at the, at the awards last year, we had a great table at a great spot. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think Pat and I were talking about buying a, um, a table for the leadership. So I'll let you know on that. Oh, you know. What's up, Dennis, how are you, buddy? Dennis? Hey guys. Hey, hey Brian. Brian. See you in a while. Yes, I am back. 45 day vacation. I highly suggest you do it if you haven't done it. Take 30 days off. Do something. Yeah. Take some time. We did off. a lot of September. Is great. This awesome. is a good good time to do it. Hey, Brian. Right, let's go ahead and get rolling. I know. Hey, Brian, I'm going to cool. reach out to you on the side. I got some guys I want to talk to you about for you. The investor group thing that you guys, that mastermind group that you guys have. So um, today, welcome everybody, by the way. Um, today we are going to be talking about how to get listings in um, in this market, right? How to motivate the sellers to list. And so, uh, you know, we all know it's a changing market. It's been an interesting market. It is, to me, the best market we've had in a long, long time. Uh, listings are coming back up, more homes for your buyers, uh, some places, like I know locally here, we're not doing multiple offers now on list. Well, we're getting some multiple offers. We're not getting much over asking anymore. So your buyers have more opportunity. Uh, I want to say one thing that someone said to me before we get rolling the other day. They we're talking about the market because that's the biggest conversation in real estate right now, right? The market. Or should I say the Boston way, the market. Um, and um, what they said to me when they were talking to a buyer, the buyers were, well, you know, interest rates are 6%. And she said to the buyer, this is brilliant. She said, well, you're going to pay 6% whether you're paying it to a landlord or paying it to, to yourself. Because the landlord's paying, you're paying their 6%. So who's 6% are you going to pay? Yours or theirs? Mm -hmm. I thought that was a great line when you talk to a buyer now in this current market on a buyer's side, right? Even though today's about sellers. So, um, you know, we haven't heard from my, my buddy Bobby in, in 45 days because he was out gallivanting Hawaii. So um, <laughs> Bobby, why don't you kick this one off? All right. Well, hello, everybody. Aloha. <laughs> Good to be back and, uh, you know, excited for this uh, third and fourth quarter. So obviously motivated sellers, very, very important. But I think, you know, uh, Mitch, you kind of touched on something. Buyers are, are gold right now because, you know, so so definitely don't just put all of your eggs in the listing basket like we've been doing the last few years got to create those buyer leads, maybe do some home buyer seminars, et cetera. So, but obviously today's on uh, sellers. So one, the first thing you got to do is you got to call all your past clients. And, and I know that's, that might sound redundant, but I know a lot of people on this call might not be doing that on a regular mm -hmm. basis. And, you know, your, your clients, they're worried, they're, they don't know what's going on in the market. So they rely on you to give them that information and just kind of make them feel okay talk to them, find out their situation. I always ask the question, is your home going to fit your needs for five years or more? It's a very great question because they'll say either yes or no. If they say yes, great. I did my job. You know, who do you, who else do you know that, that we can help? If they say no, 
then that's a probing question. You know, tell me more about that. What, what, um, you know, uh, and then they'll just tell you, you know, oh, my daughter's graduating next year. So we're going to sell our house next year and move to Tennessee. You know, so great. You know, would you like me to set you up with somebody in Tennessee so that we can, you know, kind of get that going? You know, the earlier you can get in on these conversations, the more likely you are to get the listing. So um, you also want to make sure you are sending updated CMA. I, I like doing video CMAs where I'm talking. I just I have my assistant put together the uh, the uh, the comps. Uh, they'll put the link. Uh, from the MLS right into our follow-up boss. So I can just go right in there, click, you know, go into bomb bomb, record the screen. And then I just talk about the listings that I'm seeing and I give them a ballpark on their house. It's worth this to this. And, um, you know, and then we set them up on HomeBot so that way they're getting listings from us, you know. And then the big key that I'm doing right now is trade-in. We're having conversations with every single client, every single homeowner that we know, and we're just trying to get them approved to be a buyer. Because if you want more listings, you got to find a place for them to go. And so, you know, not everybody is willing to just, you know, sell the house, do a rent back and, and go on to the next one. So, so I think it's very important to make them a buyer first, uh, get them pre-approved, set them up on a search for what they're looking for. And you're not necessarily going to have to go show them houses every weekend. It's going to be one of those situations where three months later, they're going to raise their hand and say, hey, Bobby, something just came on the market. We're really interested in it. And so now they can act on it. It doesn't have to be a contingent offer. It's a cash buyer program. Homelight right now is probably the best for this. Um, so uh, if you're not working with them, you might want to reach out to them and see if you can help them out. Um, in your farm area, I think it's really important to reach out to the, um, the people around the pendings and the sold. So whether it's yours or not, give them a call, uh, knock on their doors, let them know you have buyers, uh, let them know about the sale because maybe they didn't know about it, but it's almost guaranteed within six months, another person uh, throws their, their house on the market within 20 homes of, uh, uh, of the, the pending or sold. So really, really important. Next, uh, network with divorce and estate attorneys. Death and divorce always happens. Doesn't matter if it's a recession, doesn't matter if it's a booming economy. Those things are always gonna happen. And in fact, during a recession, you probably see more death and divorce because people are stressed out. So I think it's really important to, to get to know divorce and, uh, and estate attorneys uh, it's a it's a really good niche. Holding open houses, make sure you're asking every single person coming in, do you own a home? You want to you want to stockpile a, a CRM full of home uh, homeowners so that way you can get the two deals later on. Call mortgage lates. Mortgage lates are not the funnest thing because people are obviously pissed off that they're behind on their mortgage. So you got to be careful if you're door knocking those homes. Don't even say anything about the mortgage lates. Just let them know you have somebody, you know, or you have people interested in the neighborhood and, you know, just carry a conversation with them and then take it from there. If you're on the phone, I would go ahead and tell them, hey, I know that you're behind on your mortgage. You know, what can we do to help? We help people avoid foreclosure. Uh, made a lot of money from 2008 to 2012 doing short sales back then. I don't think we're going to get to short sales, but the difference is you want to help them capture their equity before it disappears. Because if the market drops 20, 30%, we're in trouble. So uh, that's definitely important. Uh, provide value to your sphere of influence when it comes to knowledge about other markets. Let them know that you can uh, help them in any market. We have great professionals right on this call across America that can help them uh, with their their uh, their search, you know, if you're that resource that gets them plugged into another market, they're going to be calling you when they're ready to sell the house. Um, look for sellers that have a lot of equity, because again, you want to protect that equity. You want to capture it before it disappears. Have your title reps pull a list for you and start making calls. Uh, expired calls, you're going to see a lot of those. Don't pick up the phone. Go door knock it. D don't be afraid to say to the seller, the last guy you had didn't do the right job. I already know why it didn't sell. Can I, can I talk to you for 15 minutes? Do you think a seller is going to say, no, you're right in front of them. 
If you're on the phone, they're going to say, gone. All right. So try door knocking some of those. And then make sure you have systems in place to accommodate these sellers, like moving concierge, have, uh, have people that um, contractors that can fix up the property. When you're going through the property, have a list of everything you're going to need. So like, you know, if you're going to need a, a plumber, you're going to need an electrician, make that list and then get on it with the client. So that way you're helping them and uh, create a Google doc with this that you can share with your client to be kind of like a project management doc. Um, it's a much easier way to do it than just kind of winging it, you know, especially if you're winging it with five, six, seven, eight sellers. So having that Google Doc allows your team to help out. It allows your um, it allows your um, your seller to be part of the process and you both can see what's going on. The reason why I bring that up is I, I recently went through a, a, a bad situation where the seller was just all over the place and we didn't have it written down. And so, so we came up with a document that's, you know, kind of helps out with that. So anyways, that's all I got. There's lots of opportunity out there, but it's just going to come down to the people who actually put in the uh, eight to 10 hours every single day. So yep, don't forget to work. Cool. Do the work, right? What a concept, right? And that's the thing, you know, with these things, we can give you guys tips all day long, every week. And I got to tell you, I've been involved with several different things in my life as far as from a, a contribution standpoint, helping people. This is the best thing I've ever done. I mean, the talent on here is ridiculous. And uh, actually, sometimes I wonder, like, why am I on this call? <laughs> um, but uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, let's go to um, uh, Brian. Brian, tell us what you're doing to get listings in this market. All right. Well, it, usually I have a Montana picture in the background. Now I'm in Montana and I don't have a picture on my background. So fun. <laughs> uh, hey, guys, uh, Bobby, that was great stuff. And, and you said something in the beginning about calling your clients. Make sure you're calling your past clients. And, and it's very important that you do, because if you're not, somebody else is. So you have to realize yep. somebody's calling your past clients. And if you're not calling them, someone's going to get inside their their network all of a sudden and you're going to be maybe looking at a property that you sold 10 years ago and go wow that's active what happened you know uh so don't make that mistake the second thing is is if you don't have past clients and you're new and you're with a brokerage go to the broker and ask the broker hey listen are there any agents who were really dominant listing agents that sold a lot of property that are no longer here that i could go back in and call from the company database of representation from our brokerage now you want to be careful because some of these clients could still be working with the agent who left, but the brokerage represented him. And, and if you don't have calls to make, or if you don't have any past clients, go talk to your manager and see if there is some that you could call. That, that would be a good place to start. Um, so to answer your question right now, what, what I'm doing and what we're focusing on for listings is, you know, our, our group that Randy and I work with are a lot of investors. And I'm going to give you a ninja tip if you're new and you want some. We have these things called open listings or exclusive agent listings. Now, in a market like today, you're going to have some opportunities to go find investors in every single market. It doesn't matter where you are in the country. What you end up doing is you go into the MLS and you find out the average cost per square foot value in a zip code. So if you're in a good zip code where there's been activity over the last six months, go in there and find out what the average cost per square foot value is. So as an example, in San Diego, we used to do $300 a square foot as an average. It's creeped up where Bobby's at. He's west of Interstate 5. It's like $800 to $1,000 per square foot and more in some neighborhoods. In other areas like Escondido, these are neighborhoods in San Diego that I'm aware of, the cost per square foot might be $350. So when you, when you look in the MLS and you search sold properties, if you can identify sold properties that sold well under the average, then that's an investor. You look up the tax records and you'll see, you'll find that most of the buyers who are buying properties under value in the MLS are going to be investors. And if you look at their tax records, you'll see the LLC. My suggestion is you go to that property. You go there as an agent knowing that it's an investor who bought it and see for yourself if they're re renovating it, they're taking the dog with fleas, they're gonna make it best in show and that property is gonna be on the market soon. We know that, I can guarantee. I do this exercise all day long with new agents in San Diego and for every 10 properties I find under value, seven of them are investors who are renovating them 
because they sold within the last six months under value. Try this exercise. You'll find that what you can now do is go visit that investor and find out like, hey, are you going to be uh, you interested in selling this property before it's finished? Most investors would say, well, yes, we are. What, what's, your, what's your ARV, as Randy always says? What's your after repair value? If you have an investor who's, a, who's got a property, they're interested in selling it, and you're an agent, and you have some buyers, that's great. But the other thing is, is you find out if they're going to relist it with the agent who sold it to them. And you might find out a lot of times they're not going to relist it. They just bought it direct from the listing agent, got a great deal, and they're going to relist it maybe with their own agent or with another agent. And that's an opportunity now for you to say, well, hey, before you list it, would you mind giving me a one-party showing listing agreement or start to exercise your opportunity to, to work on listings with people who have a property that's not yet on the market but will be coming on the market, so they'll pay you. You'll find that that listing could turn into multiple listings because in the neighborhood of every dog with fleas, while they're going through a renovation, statistically, another house is going to go on the market right when that house does or right when that one sells. It happens almost in every marketplace across the country. So if there's investors renovating properties, door knock those areas because investors don't door knock. They're not looking for another listing. You, they're looking for just an opportunity for the next listing. And for, for agents who want to find listings, work around investor properties, and I guarantee you're going to have some opportunities and conversations with people who are getting ready to list. And my, my conversation is, is, listen, don't put your house on the market this week or soon. Let's put it on the market once this other property is finished because they're going to set a benchmark at a new price for you. Right now, your comps aren't as great as what they're going to be when this investor flips this property. CT Homes does 100 of these a year in San Diego, and we follow them, and we do this. So that's a really good tip for newer agents to exercise how you go out and find listings if you don't have past clients. And then, you know, the last thing right now is I would recommend you go back into the MLS and you look at all the properties that expired, withdrawn, or canceled at least five years or further back and start going and, and researching if any of those properties are still owned by the same owners. And if they are, it's a good time to call them to say, hey, you know, I noticed your home didn't sell, you know, six years ago. And um, I noticed that, you know, maybe uh, you might want to look at the, the where you're at today and just exercise your scripts and go in there and figure out what works best for you to try to, to go back in the history and talk to some people. And uh, the last thing is, is we list properties in the state of California. Every agent on here is licensed at least in one state. Do not refer your clients who want to buy a property or sell a property who are 800 miles away from you. We have clients in Sacramento and we're in San Diego and they trust us. They ask us, hey, Brian, we've got to sell a property in San Francisco. You know, Cameron's in a certain part of, you know, Florida. But if somebody wants to sell a house in Tallahassee, which is not his market, they still trust him enough to talk to him, right? We all have that trust. Our suggestion, we list it on the spot every time. We draft up a listing contract, price to be determined, and what we do is we go out and find boots on the ground in that marketplace who wanna partner with us, we'll let them put it in the MLS, we'll let them have all the buyer leads, we'll let them do all the open houses, but all the offers go through us for our client. We do that 50-50. We sell houses all across California with investors and with our clients because they trust us enough. So, so if you've been referring buyers away, or sellers are way, or sellers out of area, as long as they're within the same state you're licensed, my suggestion is always take the opportunity to, to list the property for them and go find boots on the ground. That's it. Awesome stuff. You know, and the reoccurring thing where you're gonna hear from all of us probably is you, you past customers, right? Um, Hey, David, I want to welcome you aboard. I know I, I, I thrusted you in here without telling you. Uh, you you're, you're on mute right now. Um, so unmute yourself. Um, so if you guys haven't met David, David's a rock star in, in uh, Park City. And I want to welcome you aboard. And I, I, I don't know if you want to contribute. I'd love you to. I don't. I didn't give you any Becky, any chance to prepare at all. But would you like to chat a little bit about get, getting listings in this market? Well, uh, sure. We just... We're going to change our team because we do an hour ago, we do a team meeting and admin. So I'm always a few minutes getting on this. So we're trying to schedule. So I'll be able to be on this. But um, one of the things that we do 
is we really promote for the buyer side uh, our the Lawson Team Quiet Sale and Off Market programs. And essentially what that is, is anybody that we know that we're working on. So on our team meeting, we go over all, so we have 27 listings right now and we have 72 people that are in our maybe list or in our quiet sell program. So what's so good about this, Mitch, is that it does two things for you. For all the buyers, when you're talking to a buyer or you get an incoming lead, you you talk to them about that and you say, hey, Mitch, are you familiar with our the Lawson Team Quiet Sale and Off-Market Program? And Mitch goes, what? Oh, uh, what's that, right? And then we just talk about it and tell them what it is. And we say, if you go and look at our 515 five-star reviews on Zillow, you're going to find that people want to hire us or use us because of what we do extra for everybody else. And one of the things that'll be a, a theme is, oh, guy, they found me a house that was off market. The other thing this does is it gives you a list that you can always be working. And we look at that list every single week. And th so these are also our potential listings. And so you, so I call you up, Mitch, I see you have one, two, three Main Street. You know, we have this off market quiet sale. If we had a, a really interested buyer, would you even consider it? Because I'd love to put your property in our quiet sale program. And, you know, would you allow us to do that? And so <clears throat> it is phenomenally uh, successful, both on the buyer and the, and the seller side. The other thing is, is that we've moved our whole team of 20 people over like 15 agents. Um, this transition over the last couple of weeks has been a little challenging, but we're about 80% there. Uh, Pete was so, Pete and Dennis, I can't tell you how great they are. Yeah. And I'm getting phone calls from people all around town, but it's been hard because I've been focusing really on the move and transferring, you know, we, we had a bunch of listings, but um, one of the things that I told Pete, Kai, I don't know, I'm leaving England Volkers, you know, and having the name and having all that. And he's like, well, you know, it, it might be a little challenging to get listings and it, it's a concern, but you know what? It's everything that we do. So one of the things that I should show you is this. So this is a document that we call just the facts. And I believe it is one of the things that helps us get listings big time. And if you looked at this, Engel and Volkers really wasn't on it. And um, so I, I can tell you a couple of things about what we do. This is not necessarily for everybody, but um, to give you an idea in Park City, first of all, one, so Mitch, what market are you in? We're in uh, Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, Florida. Okay, you're in, okay. Is the real estate market pretty competitive there? Oh yeah. How competitive? Uh, well, it's gotten, you know, it's changed a little the last month or so, right? Uh, but we're still getting multiple offers on, on, on the mid range properties. Okay, yeah. And, and how many agents do you have in your uh, town? Locally, 180, 180 locally. 180. And how many people live in your town? Uh, 650,000. Okay. Six, so what is, somebody do the math. What is 650,000 divided by 108? Well, that's, those are my agents, by the way. That's not, we have oh. five, we have, we have 5,500 agents locally. Okay. The, the reason I'm saying this is that I had to learn how to get really good and, and wrap your arms around this. There are about 10,000 people that live in our town. And we have 1,400 agents. So one out of every seven people, if, if, you, if you look out my window and two cars, three cars go by, one of those is a realtor, right? <laughs> it is ultra competitive. So we had to yes, figure sir. out ways to do things. So I always say, none of you are going to get a listing by what you do the same as everybody else. So one of the things that I do in this document called Just the Facts is I look at the things that we do differently. So just to give you an idea, 
So what I did, so the first thing I did is every seller wants what? More money, right? Have you ever met a seller that doesn't want more money? No. So I said, so this is what I do. I took all the listings on the MLS for six years. I compared it to the six years of the Lawson team. And basically, Mitch, we got you 2.24% more money. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but the average home in Park City is $1,512,500. And what that means, if it's an average property, um, you're going to end up with $33,880 more in your pocket. Sound good? Okay. Okay. That's number one. Number two. We found that 94% of all the buyers in the, in, in the country or the world for that matter, they go online and that's where they search. And over the last year and a half, we have averaged spending $50,684 a month in Zillow, Trillia, Realtor.com and so on. Now, we're a flex partner. We're the first flex partner in Utah. There's only three. Uh, there's us in the Park City and the Wasatch back, or, uh, and then there's one in Salt Lake, and then there's, there's uh, or north of Salt Lake and south of Salt Lake. But because of that, we talk about what, you know, Mitch, can you, um, and, and we don't answer the question, we just ask, Mitch, can you imagine what $50,684 a month marketing your home, home will do? Sure. Okay. Thank you. The next thing is we say, we, Mitch, um, do you watch, have, have you ever seen the ABC TV show every Sunday, Real Estate Essentials? Yeah. And either they say yes or no. And if they say no, I go, frankly, Mitch, I don't watch it much because I, on, you know, I don't watch a lot of TV. But ABC TV, Mitch, they reached out to me three and a half years ago because we were selling more property up here and they gave us um, the exclusive for the ABC TV show. And what that means is when you list with me, we're gonna put your property on the market and, uh, or on the TV show. And then we go in and then I have a, spe a, spe a spiel on that. You guys don't need to know it because you don't have that, right? <laughs> um, the next thing is we, we tell them and we show them our especially if and we do a lot of zoom listing presentations or we bring our computer and we pull up boomtown and if you have a uh, a crm that is got a bunch of buyers and sellers in it and you pull it up right now we just went over seventeen thousand people and i tell people i physically wrote a check for over 2.4 million dollars to zillow and that's how I got 17,000 people. So when I list your property, we're going to go in here and I take the boom town and I put in the parameters. So your house is a million five. So I go, everybody looking for a house from a million to two million or, um, and then up over four bedrooms and in this general area and boom, it pops up all of those people. Yep. Okay. And when they see it and you say, Mitch, as soon as I list your property, we're going to reach out to everybody with an 80 or above. I mean, and it just blows them away. The other thing is we say there's, Mitch, there's about 10,000 properties in Park City. And um, 10 days or so ago, we just went over 3,000 sales. So we have a little bit of um, experience on our team. And then the last thing is, Mitch, we've only been talking now for 20 minutes, but, you know, we got to, you know, what we're telling you is like impressive, right? But we stand behind it in every way. And we have what we call our easy exit listing agreement. It simply says, we're so confident you love our service that for any reason whatsoever, you're dissatisfied, simply withdraw your listing, no hassle, no offense, no compromise. And so we make it so easy for people to say yes. And you wanna know how well this does? And Mitch, uh, I'm not too worried about taking listings because in the, the two weeks ago, I was focusing on moving. This week, we focused a little bit more on getting listings. So we've taken nine listings in the week for over $26 million. Oh, that's and, amazing. And it's, 
it's part of the whole system that we use, right? And so, uh, so that's a that's just a little bit. I, I wasn't prepared, but <laughs> as you can tell, I know how to present just the facts, right? And and what I do is is okay. So, <clears throat> Engel and Volkers is is like the ultra luxury brand, right? And what wasn't that used, you know, what used to be on here that isn't is that I was the number one team at England Volkers worldwide right. up until up until two weeks ago. Right. So now I, I guess I'm the formerly number one team there. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so, David, uh, this is the, um, you know, the the Internet stuff. You did. I used to do the same thing with my database. We had about 50,000 leads and we would we would uh, go to the seller, do the exact same thing. It's so powerful. To sit there and say, look, we have 422 buyers now looking in this price range in this market. Yeah. Very powerful. Very yeah. Powerful. So thank you so much for contributing. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited to have you on board. Um, it's uh you can have a lot of fun. We we uh we we I may not sell a lot of houses anymore, but I do have a lot of fun. Uh <laughs> that was great, David. Thank you for sharing that stuff. I I, hey, I was here right in the way here. So thank you. Hey David, one question. Um, someone asked if you could share a link or a PDF of the that um just the facts in the chat box is that possible uh you also have a lead that just popped up with a phone number just to keep that in mind too oh i do oh well i'm interested lead, uh, yeah. Renee, yeah, i know you are <laughs> yeah on the chat there that she's got a fa family selling in park city so you're gonna be the guy well, welcome to exp and welcome that's, to that's what happens fam the <laughs> okay right, that's cool parents may be interested 760. Okay. Um, yeah. Can I just say one thing that David, you are obviously amazing being the number one England Volkers or former England Volkers. Seems like maybe EXP is becoming that ultra luxury brand being that we're all here. I think most of us do pretty high luxury stuff. The way that you talk and the way that you deliver um, is something I'm obviously working on. You have perfected how to speak to people in a way that they listen, right? I think all of us here were drawn into listening to you, not because of what you're saying. I think most of us do a lot of the same stuff, but how you say it and how you present it, you're an expert at that. And I really, I, I'm glad that you're on our team and I'm glad that you're going to be on these calls because I'm learning from you as you do this. Well, I've done this, I've done a presentation thousands and thousands and thousands of times, right? And I practice it, but I have my team. We role play. We I coach them. I I have a coaching company called Competitive Advantage Consulting Services, or CACS Coach, and it, I, I I have a whole. I, I, it's some. It, it's something. I, I don't want to get into that, but it's something that we're going. I'm going to be implementing in um, in in and well, well, I'll just tell you what it is real quick. So I started a company, I could have been selling, I could have been, owned a very large um, coaching company, but I decided not for two reasons. Number one, if you own a coaching company, you own two companies. One is coaching and one is collections. You know why? Because I call you Cameron, your credit card didn't go through this month. What's up, right? I, I didn't do that. So I came up with a concept that nobody's ever heard of in the world of coaching. I started the company in 1989. And so I always tell people this. So Mitch, how many agents in the country or Cameron need a coach on a percent? Only 100%, only 2% do it. So right. why do 98% not have a coach? And the reason why is this, they're unwilling or they're unable to pay every single month or they don't see the value. So I went, I moved over to Engel and Volkers to start this company or not to change it. So I, now I coach, I, I used to coach anybody at Engel and Volkers that wanted in their four or 5,000 agents. And I would coach them for free. And then I would just charge them 5%. So Mitch, how many homes did you say sell last year? Say 20. 20. You sold 20? Okay. So with all of my experience, and so you have a coach that, that sells over $300 million a year. First of all, if you could find a coach that sells $300 million of real estate a year, you should hire that guy or gal. 
Okay. But so here's the simple math. You're, you're in real estate. You can do simple math. You probably can do great math. But if, if, if you do 20 homes, do you think I could sell? I could help you in one year go from 20 to 21 with all of my experience? I don't think so. Say yes. And you yes. say, so that's the 5%. Okay. So there it is. So if I get you, what if, but what if I get you from 20 to 30 deals? And by the way, I, on my website, you can listen to the guy who is um, Paul Benson. He owns 20, uh, 39 offices at Ingle and Volkers and mostly Rocky Mountain West. He owns most of the Ingle and Volkers offices in California. And his control, controller did a study for us. And I increased the business of the agents by 34% in 16 months. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be offering. So I've decided to not charge anything still, but I'm going to offer my coaching to people that I sign up or, or if I sign up Joe and Joe signs up Susie and Susie signs up whatever, I'm going to offer that coaching to everybody. That's cool. It's very cool. All right, let's, let's move along. I, I love, um, you know, I love contribution based on results, right? Because it's, it's such a uh, more powerful thing. And like you said, David, most people don't have, they don't do it because they don't have the money. And uh, yeah, and I hate collecting just on a, we do a, a a thing called app files here for our agents. We have about 20 of our agents locally on it and we're constantly chasing them for credit cards on that. So I don't, <laughs> it's such a pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, let's roll over to um, to Mr. Lurch. He's lurching behind there waiting to get on. Um, and there's okay. some tough guys to follow, man. <clears throat> hey, David, welcome to the family. Let's go and let's have some fun coming from Philly for you. Um, Thanks, Craig. There was, Cameron, you had said something and we had talked about it before. When, when you're communicating with people, it's 10% what you're saying. It's 35% in the tonality and 55% in the body language. So when you were watching David and understanding, he was very methodical in how he was moving, how he was discussing, how he was talking. There's multitudes of personalities, your DISC personalities we've all talked about it um but again it comes down to that tonality and being comfortable it comes practice we've talked about scripts before everybody says you know scripts are no fun i don't want to say a script that it's not real well guess what tiger woods has a script um mackerel all those guys tennis players everybody it's just swinging a racket it's swinging a golf club a race car driver their scripts you know driving the car so we all have scripts. It's just we do it in different ways. And how do we discuss them? Um, th that list is fantastic. And dealing with sellers, I mean, Bobby had a huge thing. Doing the CMAs for your clients is a key. We're going back to that. But also what we're doing is we're starting to go back to a touch. Um, we're actually in, putting in uh, Agent Hub 360 into our, in our, into our company, um, which a lot of people, they're, they're within the XP, they do some others also. They literally take the whole operations of all your client, your database, and put it into a funnel and then put it through um, and then put it into like VAs and then put it into a computer system, the phones and the notes. Why am I doing that? Because our future funnel of our clients is real important. It was great for two years. We were just taking check marks and all that. But for the next eight to 10 years, it's probably not going to be that way again. So we got a plan for the future. And what are we doing? We're going back to the clients. We're cleaning up to who our best is. We're calling them and saying, and, and there are, they have the callers. We've done the scripts. Hey, Craig's expanding his business. We're updating our information. And the reason I'm calling is because he wants to invite you to a personal cocktail hour for two hours on the state. Could you make it? So what we're trying to do is get on the phone and get to these people and do functions with them in small groups over the past, especially ones that have been five to 10 years ago mm -hmm. that we haven't maybe done some with, because those are the ones that are going to want to sell. Just like Bobby had said, you know, do you see your house self in this house over the next five years? And that could have been a question two years ago. And now it isn't. Now they're not going to be. So with all what the guys have said, great. We're just doing little 
group meetings, little group things with them and trying to get warm and fuzzy because out of sight, out of mind, they're getting inundated with ads. They're getting inundated with uh, mailers of who to list with, you know, dog and pony shows. We're going down to the, you know, warm and fuzzy, touchy of, hey, we've got the expertise. We know what we're talking about and we have the relationship. So we're going really back to relationships and trying to find a business. Cool, that's what it's all about. Dennis, up to you, buddy. Yeah, hey guys, um, Dave, welcome. Dave and Mike, I see Mike over there. Um, welcome, we're, we're really excited to have you guys on. And um, you know, Dave, we're getting a couple of people on the message boards asking about your coaching program. So maybe in one of these future masterminds, you can enlighten that a little more. Um, what we're getting, guys, really is, your, you know, we get this recurring theme of your database, right? You guys need to be calling your database. Um, right now, I'm just telling you, we took three, three, two and a half million dollar listings in the last 10 days. And these sellers are, they're getting anxious right now. So these are guys, two of them were sitting on the sidelines, hoping the market kept going up. But they're, they're getting a little itchy and a little anxious right now. And they're listening a lot more to the agent now, where before they were just very cocky. Now they're like, Hey, we need to sell. What do we need to do? You know, we're we're a little nervous about this market. We see it on the news, et cetera, et cetera. So this this market's fantastic. I mean, I'm I'm more excited than ever, honestly. I mean, so don't anybody be scared about any negative news that you hear. Um, this market's fantastic for the skilled agent, okay? And skills are the key. So we um we we get a lot of our listings from prime seller leads. It's basically an online home evaluation tool. Um, we, we generate seller traffic from a company called Home Gain. And if anybody wants to know the contact info over there, I'd be happy to share that with you. And they basically just drive seller traffic, traffic, PPC traffic to our um, evaluation site. And I have my inside salesperson call those people and we get listings that way. Um, that's yeah. one way we're getting listings right now. Um, the second way is lenders. Talk to your lenders. The lenders know when sellers are trying to pre-qualify to purchase another home before we know they're thinking about selling okay so call your lenders and chat with them and say hey i just want you know weekly who who have you been talking to that's maybe been you know poking you on the shoulder asking about interest rates and pre-qualifications that own a home i'd love to talk to them if they're considering selling their home so one of one of those listings we just took for 2.4 was from my lender that i give a lot of business to and he referred them to me He's like, hey, these people thinking about moving out of state, give them a call. So he set that up. It was easy. It was a direct referral. There was no question about it. They trust him. Since they trust him, they trust me in return, right? So there was no, there was really no listing presentation on that one. It was just simple as simple could be. Um, so, so reach out to your lenders. Um, they know ahead of time who's pre-qualifying to maybe purchase somewhere out of state or even in state. And um yeah, that's that's what I have right now. Um, also, know your laws, guys. Here in California, we have a and all the all us California agents know when you when you sell your home, we have a we have like a one point two percent tax base here, um, based on purchase price. That's how it works in California. And for the longest time, if you sold a million dollar house and went to purchase a one point five million dollar house, you could not transfer that tax over. So now they changed a the law about in twenty twenty one where if you sell that million dollar house and you purchase a $1.5 million house, that $500,000 difference, you just pay the excess taxes on that and you can transfer the million dollars over. Bobby, you knew about this, right? So on one of my listings, um, the agent from a really reputable brokerage came to me, showed the property. She's like, well, the price won't work because this the, my buyers can't transfer their tax base over because it's more than what they're going to be selling for. <laughs> so, and this was, embarrassingly, this was a good agent that from a really reputable brokerage. So I had to just explain to her, I was like, do you know about the new law that passed last year that you can actually do that now? They just have to pay the difference. And she had no idea where an escrow is closing next week. So, you know, know, know your particular state laws in California, we're kind of specific about that one, but really understand your laws because that, that basically got a deal in escrow that we're all going to get paid on now. And it helped their buyer out, right? Hey, so. hey Dennis, that is, yeah. a that is a 55 and older law. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Just make sure that's yeah. not with any age group. That's 55 and older. Correct. Correct. So, so, but a lot of people didn't know that, right? So a lot of agents don't know that. So just know your state specific laws. Everybody has different ones. So, um, you know, and of course I do, I do my, um, my letter, right? My listing letter. You guys have all seen this. I've shared it before. This thing's a jackpot. <laughs> 
you have to do it right. It's a whole nother session on how we do that. But um, if anybody needs that, just shoot me an email or put it in, put your name in the um, in the chat board and I'll send that over to you. That's awesome. all I got. Always good stuff. Um, yep, always good stuff. So let's go to, let's see, we got left. We got Cameron, we got me. Cameron, we got bud. Yes, sir. I got a lot here, guys. So I'll be quick so that you have some time to talk, Mitch, as always. Um, this 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 mastermind class this week, we have kind of three topics going on, right? We have seller generating seller leads, which is like, I think a lot of folks have been talking about calling your past clients, seeing who's ready to purchase and, and you know, ready to go now. If, talk to them, ask them questions. If we weren't to sell, would you be staying in this home for five to seven years? That's our typical market cycle. Um, so generating leads or, or getting a big source funnel of leads, that is one, one topic we can talk about. Now, I think we were trying to go over kind of motivating our sellers or motivating leads right now. And I think the biggest thing to take from that is that you can't motivate everybody. You have to start becoming a little bit more picky and choosy with the listings that you're going to take, right? Just because somebody wants to sell their home for a, a value that's fantasy land doesn't mean that we can actually help them sell that. And it's okay telling people that, hey, you know, at this price, I don't feel comfortable taking your listing because we take saleable listings. We don't just take listings to hold inventory. That's just a waste of all of our time. And they'll actually respect that. You know, you, the sellers will respect you for, for standing up for yourself, telling them that, hey, at this price, I don't believe I can sell it. Maybe some other Yoho thinks he can, no offense to any other Yoho, but maybe some other agent thinks that he can, but the market statistics, when we go over our CMAs and we go over the analytics, don't show that. So where do you believe that this home could sell or why do you believe that this home could sell at that price? Let them then explain it to you, ask questions. It's, it's a process. We're not trying to convince them at this point. We are trying to make sure that they are a seller that we want to take on. And as the market gets more challenging, like in 2009 for me, I was really specific on the listings I would take. I would go on all kinds of listing presentations. And at the time I would walk out and say, you know, hey, I just don't feel like we can sell your home at that price. And I wouldn't get that listing. But And I wasn't carrying 50, 60, 70 listings like some of the top Mike Ferry agents were. I was carrying five or six at the time, selling them as we would get them, as a good market does, or as the normal market is. Um, I think you just need to be a little bit more selective on on the listings that you're taking because you don't want to be holding, you know, you don't want to be holding overpriced listings and wasting your time uh, with unmotivated sellers. 100%. Value, you guys, everything comes from value. So when you do sit down with these sellers, you need to show what you do differently. I think all of us has now learned that if we show off that we have these big databases, people like that. And and David, the comment of, well, can you imagine what $50,000 of advertising a month does for you? In their minds, they're just going crazy, right? Oh, I can do all this. Now, we know as realtors, we know exactly what it does for us, right? We know exactly what we get from it. We know the numbers we get for it. Uh, but it's hard to relay that on to your clients or your sellers. Um, now, doing it with social media, you're able to show them the actual views. Obviously, I am a huge social media person right now. Social media has kind of taken over everything because I now go and do these listening presentations most of my listing presentations come from sellers that find me online. They already really want to work with me. They already know all about what I'm doing. They know about my marketing because they're watching it every single day. I go and I say, yeah, we're doing viral social media marketing. You guys need to do this to sell your home. Why do your home not sell? And they go, oh, it could be whatever. Okay, well, I'm going to get it in front of a million people. Does that, you think that could help you sell? Absolutely great. Let's sign the contract. It has severely or it significantly reduced my listing presentation because I have something nobody else has and I can create value where nobody else can create it. I love the idea of telling them how much you're spending and the exact numbers that obviously builds um, rapport and, and trust and they you know decide to choose you. But before then, when they're comparing other agents that um, you know, they're all showing their database. I used to, I walk in with my iPad, I got 22,000 people in my database. It's like, yes, these are the best. But after two or three or four people do that, it's like, okay, so all you guys have these big databases. What do you do or how does that help me uh, sell my specific home? And I say, well, with this database, obviously I get it sent out, but not only that, but I'm getting millions and millions of views on social media. And, and obviously if they came from social media, they kind of get that, right? If you get a lead that comes from a social media source, they've been watching you, they call you and they say, hey, I seen you on Facebook or Instagram. They already get the fact that you're advertising there and you're the one that they're seeing constantly. Um, I got a couple other things. The TV show, you can do the same thing with social media. I absolutely love it. Again, that's value, you guys. Having a TV show, huge. Well, you have an online social media TV show that gets a million views. That's more than most cable shows. 
as, as crazy as that sounds, if you can get a million views on a social media post, that is more than network television. So uh, you can roll that in. There's all kinds of scripts that you can use for that just to show more value. Um, attorneys, Bobby, that was a fantastic divorce attorneys for finding leads. I think the most important question I always asked uh, potential clients of mine. So a seller that I'm potentially going to be taking on is what would happen if this home didn't sell? Right. What, what, what would happen? Would you guys just not move? Would your dreams of going to Tennessee or going wherever you were going just not happen? Um, and they'll tell you, they will lay it all out for you. They'll give you their whole life plan. And then you can base your decision if you want to take them on as a client from there. Some folks just won't sell their home in the downward turning market. You'll constantly be chasing the market. And that's not the goal. Uh, well, Brian, I want to, I want to answer your question. Where we're going. Yeah, no, I wanted to comment. So what you said was really good, Cameron. And, and when you're sharing that database, what I've learned to really get a competitive ad, edge at that moment is when I share my second database that we all should have. If you don't have it, this is the one you should have. And it's of every top producing agent who may have already been there for a listing presentation before or who is coming after me. And what I would do is I would collect all the top agents for their marketplace. And I would say to them, listen, this is my database. This is where I'm going to send it to. These are all these other places. But you know, who the first people I contact are, are obviously the top producers right here in our marketplace, because wouldn't you assume that those big name people already have a buyer for your home? And those are the first people. So we have a coming soon opportunity in our contract. I don't know if you have it there, but that coming soon marketing is very important for agents who wanna get the word out to all the top agents so they can back off because they know your house is already listed. I love that. I absolutely love that. And you can, uh, one of the things that we were doing, especially in 09 and 10, um, we would do an agent report card. So if one of the pre-qualifications questions I had before I'd go out is, are you planning on interviewing any other agent for the job of selling your home? And they'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd say, great. Well, I know all the top agents. Why don't you give me their names and I'll bring you out my agent report card and you can go over and see what they're selling. And what it was, was a simple CMA of all the homes they sold at the list price and the sale price. Like David, like you were saying, it would be 96 and a half, 97 percent. That was average back then. Um, and then we'd come out with ours and it would be 99 percent, 100 percent, 101 percent, because at the time we were even doing things right. We were making it look as good as we could at removing, lowering price. We were doing whatever we were doing to make sure that our statistics were at the top, top, top percentage. And they were better than everybody else. So when you sit down with them and you say, OK, what do I do differently? I have a huge database. I do all this marketing for you. But in the end of the day, what I do is I get you two and a half percent more and I can show you, boom, here, this is the statistics. These are all the other agents that you're looking at. Do you want to make more money helping, you know, do you want to make more money at the end of the day or not? And that's kind of the end all be all. I used to be a little bit more straightforward. I wasn't as uh, soft. I was kind of arrogant, worked good when I was younger. I try to be a little bit more, more like David, a little softer and make people want to listen to me more rather than telling them. Um, but yeah, that's what we used to do is show them what the other agents did and then show us what we did and directly compare it. And, and if you're not winning, you guys, you need to get better and you need to spend some more time in your business, becoming a better expert, getting your numbers up so that, that you are the market expert. And when you do that, it's, it's not hard, you guys, but it is, it's work and we all know it's work. So yes, Brian. No, I'm done. Sorry. He's good. He's, his hand's still raised. He's, he's got arthritis. He has trouble putting it down. Yeah, I'm old. Uh, so, uh, hey, Mitch, I just, yes. just so you know, I, um, Mike got me the just the facts. So it's now in the chat. So okay. if anybody wants a copy of that letter, there it is. I just needed somebody more techno to get that done but for me. That's in the, um, can you make it so it's in the, uh, that's just for the panelists to see. It needs to go so everybody can see. Uh, how do I do that? So, hey, Mitch, for some reason, that's not an option today. All, all we can do is uh, do the hosts and panelists. That's it. Much oh, actually, there it is. There it is. Never mind. Now it's there. It wasn't there earlier. Yeah. So when you go to the chat box, David, it, it says it'll say all panelists. If you just click on the arrow, it'll, it'll you'll see at the top. It'll say everyone. You just click on everyone. Okay. All right. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. This has been all amazing stuff as always, right? You guys are always rock stars on this. I'm going to finish this up with just a couple of comments. Um, first of all, why do people use you? People use you because you happen to be in front of them at the time they're thinking about buying or selling, or you're the rock star in the area, but like David. Um, but generally speaking, you know, everybody knows uh, we, almost 1% of the people in Brevard County, Florida are realtors, right? Um, a little less than David's number there, but in Park City, but 
Um, so why would people use it when everybody knows 10 different people? It's because you happen to be in front of them at the moment they're thinking about buying or selling. That's it. So that's why we that's why we we hound on being in front of your past customers and your circle of influence so much on a regular basis, because if you're not, they're going to use somebody else. Uh, one of my favorite ways of getting buyers right now, and, 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 you know, it's all about talking to them in the current market. You know, it's obviously uh, area specific. It's not as much here because I don't think we're gonna, with the space center, we're going to have as much of a down uh, turn as a lot of other areas of the country. But still to said, you know, in every area between 2008 and 2012 and 14, the markets hit the bottom. And so you have lots of people that owned homes uh, that, that don't live in the area. They bought them as investment properties. Uh, your title companies can get that. Uh, there's programs out there called IMAP that you can, you can get that information. So what you want to look for is non-homesteaded properties, people that don't live there, that bought their homes between, say, 2010 and 2014. And I'll just give you an example. We have a, a town here called Palm Bay. In 2012, you could buy a, a three-bedroom, two-bath, 1,800-square-foot home, square foot home for $60,000 that was built in 2004, five or six. That's how badly we crashed here. Those people that bought those homes back then, those homes are now worth $350,000 to $400,000. So you've got to reach out to those people and say, hey, look, you know, don't be chasing the market down. Take advantage of the market right now in your profits. You're an investor, right? Investors get out when the market's perfect. We are just at the tip right now. Get out now. That's one good way. Past customers I won't talk about because we've just spent – Everybody's talked about past customers. you got to be in front of them. Uh, and then one other thing you can do, which is not really as much getting listings, but it is getting listings through referrals. Um, you know, one of the things I always did when I when I started my business, I did it by accident, is I learned to reach out to my all my friends back in Boston, where I'm from. Uh, and I told them, you know, if you know someone looking to buy or sell a home, if they pick the wrong realtor, it could cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. And which is true, we all know that. So what I would say is what I, one of the services I do for my friends and my family is I will interview, if you look, look at, if you're someone you know is looking to list their, their home, let me know, I'll interview three realtors and I'll find who's the best realtor that fits you the best and help you do that. And I did really, really well. I don't know, remember the number, I made about $30,000 a year extra back then, uh, you know, so it was probably 15 sales a year I got from that. Um, but every you get referral checks. So there's lots of ways of doing this. Also with what Brian said, um, we did the same thing. I had a, I didn't want to do this. So I did this by accident. I had a friend of mine call me, actually my wife's best friend and asked me to do a listing in um, Tampa, Florida, which is a two and a half hour drive from my house. And at first I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So what I did is I, I had to join the board over there, which is a few hundred dollars. It wasn't a big deal. Um, but I did it. I drove over there and I, I did the listing and then I found a local agent there to put their name on the sign as the buyer agent because I had no desire to do it. I said, look, if you get any buyers from me, I want 25%. She's like, great, not a problem. And so basically she got a bunch of buyers. I got a few 25% referral fees in. Um, but then I realized I went over there three times to list that house. So I had a total of five hours, three times, 15 hours of driving back and forth. And I made $12,000. So if I asked you to drive five hours, three times, and I give you $15,000, would you do that? It's a no brainer, right? Most people would. Uh, I mean, you know, the, now that I'm filthy rich that I may not know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, um, but the reality is that's kind of, you know, you got to look at, I, I know we don't want to always work outside of our market if you don't want to, but you can still list the property yeah, it, within your state. So I, I a hundred percent believe that um, we're at one o'clock. So, Anyways, I hope you got a lot of good stuff out of this today. David, again, thank you for coming on board. Looking forward to having you with us every week uh, and joining us and sharing your wisdom. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys are all rock stars. I, I just appreciate you guys. Uh, Pete is coming back next week, so we'll have at least somebody good-looking moderating this because uh, obviously I look like this, and uh, that's why I have to be funny because I look like this. Uh, have a great week, guys. We'll talk to you all soon. Have a great week, everybody. Hey, Go kill it. Congrats, Dave. You're awesome. Yeah. Thank you. You won't lose anything. I promise. They People don't even, they don't, you think they do. I was with the largest boutique down here in Southwest Florida. It's all value. It's what's in your prequal, what you say, how you say it. And that's, that's the money. That's what people want. And then you, I actually found that um, being one of the first EXP agents in our area down here 
helped because what is exp oh it's a worldwide online only brokerage wow this is new this is cool and you joined it because you, they see value in you um it, it really helped me so i think you'll you'll feel the same way the, the, the onboarding though i know the onboarding is we all know yeah but actually i it was not i mean it was hard but it wasn't harder than i really thought it would be um, but I'm I'm buying my um, executive assistant some really nice massages and gifts and things like that. <laughs> um, I love but it. yeah, I got a great story too because my 